Hey folks, Alan Manic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week we're talking about shrinking and stretching via magical machines. No, I'm not talking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. No, I'm not talking about Ant-Man. I'm talking about shrinkers, stretchers. Let's go ahead and check it out. This week's video is brought to you by Audible. Personally, about a year ago, I switched away from listening to the same songs day in and day out to listening to audiobooks. I've been chewing through books ever since. You can get yourself a free, no risk, 30 day trial of Audible. Follow the link audibletrial.com slash HRH Check it out for yourself, cancel at any time, see what I'm going on about with audiobooks today. So in this video, we're gonna discuss a little bit of the basics of the shrinker stretcher, the design of them, the uses of them, and I'm gonna throw you out some tips of how I personally use shrinker stretchers in my workflow. If you ask me to list off my top five metal shaping tools that I felt were necessary in an auto restoration or sheet metal metal shaping shop, then I would absolutely somewhere on that list have shrinker stretchers. Now the most common design of shrinker stretcher you're probably familiar with that you'll see in many shops is this design right here. This is called the Lancaster style shrinker stretcher. It was originated in in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 1939, and the company that originated the design, CB Tool, is still making them today. This blue one here is an Eastwood version, which is an Asian import one. Like many things today, these, this design has been copied time and time again, so there are a lot of these available on the market from various companies picking them up from overseas. The basic design of a shrinker stretcher is pretty straightforward. It's basically two levers actuating on a set of dies. You have one lever operated by either a hand handle or a foot actuation like this Mittler Brothers stand that I personally prefer. And then that operates a larger lever that applies force down on the dies. The downward force on the jaws goes ahead and grips the material that is in between those jaws and either shrinks it or stretches it depending on which dies you have in place. This action is created by ramps. The ramps that are cut into the jaws and cut into the ramp blocks themselves are angled one way or the other to either grab that material and bring it together for shrinking or grab that material and pull it apart for stretching. Now gripping the material is achieved by the serrated faces on the jaws. The serrations allow it to bite in the material and bring it together or pull it apart as necessary. I keep saying shrink and stretch. It is arguable that metal shaping is entirely three things, shrink, stretch, and form. Those are personally the entirety of metal shaping in my eyes. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out my eight metal shaping terms defined so I can explain to you a little bit better what those terms truly mean. But in the context of here, shrinking means gathering material up and making it thicker. Stretching means thinning that material out and stretching it apart. The simplest way, the easiest way to get into using a shrinker stretcher, the most basic use is bending flanges. All you need is a piece of material, generally bent at a 90 degree angle, that's the easiest angle of material bend to work with. My biggest tip I can give you for a shrinker stretcher, what I started doing years ago, something I highly recommend, is to mark your flanges every inch or every half inch, depending on what you're doing. Doing this allows you to keep track of where you're shrinking and stretching. And to not only keep your consistent, so you can maybe stretch every inch, shrink every inch, and it'll allow you to kind of gently, evenly curve the piece, or it can allow you to keep track of what you're doing so you can reproduce it on another side. Well, you need to start with one and then follow up with a second one. If you have marks to figure out where you started and stopped, recreating the mirrored piece will be significantly easier. Now let's go ahead and actually demonstrate using these tools. I'm gonna to apply light, even pressure, starting slowly. I could push a lot harder in this, but I'm not. The idea is to sneak up on the shape I'm trying to create. In metal shaping, you should never go right for the finished product you're looking for. You should do it in baby steps, slower. That way it's more controlled. This nice consistent shape is a lot easier to create in that way. And if I keep working in one area too much, you end up with a failure point, created a stress point, and overstretched the material. <laughs> The same thing applies when it comes to shrinking, in my opinion. It is slow and steady wins the race. That's how you're gonna get nice, consistent, slow, even flowing pieces that are gonna match the shapes you're trying to look for. You can go whole hog on this thing. I'm pushing full force on a half inch wide flange here, trying to turn a 90 as quick as I can, just to show you a bird's eye view of how that actually looks and functions. You can see that I'm moving this material quite quickly and I'm really thickening up that corner. So as I do so, it's gonna become more difficult. 
These can be used for a range of different things. The most common places people usually think about these is something like wheel tubs, wheel arches when you're doing a quarter panel rust repair. You can go ahead and use these to create that nice arch, follow that shape of that existing piece or create your own shape. One last tip about flanges, I find that three quarter inch wide flanges is the sweet spot when using a Lancaster style shrink or stretcher setup. It's enough material that the tool can actually grab onto there and do its job effectively. And also it's wide enough to allow you to hammer and dolly when you maybe butt weld in against that flange later. So it's a really good width of flange to work with. Now the most negative thing that I can say about the shrink or stretchers is tooling marks. These things simply leave marks on everything they touch. The serrated jaws bite into the material to either bring it together or stretch it apart. Now these aluminum flanges I was working with, they started at 47 thousandths thick. When I shrunk to almost a 90 degree corner on this piece of the half inch wide flange one, this ended up at 67 thousandths thick at its thickest point. That is a 20 thousandths thick gain on the thickness of that material. So I could easily hammer and sand out those tooling marks and not be at all concerned about losing too much material thickness. However, when you're stretching, you need to consider the fact that you are thinning the material out. So you may not be able to sand those tooling marks out sufficiently. You might need to plan for that in your work. Or if you're gonna be welding a flange to a piece, you may need to consider that as well. If you have an 18 gauge floor pan and you wanna to go to a 18 gauge flange, well, if you stretched it, you thin that flange out. So now you have two different thicknesses of material you're gonna be welding together. You can plan for this sometimes by maybe using thicker material for your flange. Use 16 gauge for your flange. So when you stretch it, you have the proper thickness of material or at least material that you can sand away to blend into your thinner material. You can use shrinker stretchers to do all kinds of metal shaping. But let me demonstrate what I'm talking about here with a basic piece of aluminum. So to shrink and start rounding this corner over, I've got this rounded corner cut onto this piece and I'm just taking a one inch deep bite out of this, shrinking on that edge, very lightly pushing the panel down with my hand just to kind of direct the direction of the shrink. I'm going to take a little shallower bite on the edge to continue to turn that corner down and around. This whole process took me less than a minute to get it to this point. Sorry for the out of focus shot, but that's about an inch of shrink. What you're seeing here is a disc that I did one trip around with the hand shrinker setup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the foot operated shrinker, which I can apply more force, and I'm just gonna to go to town on it and see how much I can really shrink this thing down. I would normally go to either a planishing hammer or the English wheel to go ahead and work this through there and smooth the transition from the flat area into the shrunk area of the piece and smooth that out. Maybe I would do that a couple of times and then I would go back to the shrinker and shrink it some more, smooth it some more and do that numerous times to create a, a continuous step that comes around that can be a really handy and effective way of working with this material. When I was creating the inner fenders for my dad's 65 C10 truck, I actually used the shrinker setup to go ahead and pre-shrink the piece. So I created that rounded over edge on there. I pre-shrunk that, then I used the Mittler Brothers rounding over dies on the bead roller to create that rounded radius corner on the inner fender. You may see a pretty clear cut limitation of the Lancaster style shrinker stretchers right here. And that is quite simply, they only have a one inch deep design. You can only go one inch in on the material. In a lot of instances, this can be very handy, but in a lot of instances, it's not enough. If you wanna create a much more complex shape, say a bigger bowl, like a 12 inch bowl, well, you won't be able to do that with a one inch deep bite. Well, that's where you need a much deeper design of shrink or stretcher setup. There are various designs of these. There are designs that use the Lancaster style jaws into a deep throat frame. Personally, I don't really like that design. I've never found one that I felt worked properly the way I really expected it should. The most common and one of the best designs out there is the JS Tools version. The JS Tools version is purpose designed to be a deep throat shrinker stretcher setup. 
It has oval shaped jaws that are a little bit taller so you can work with taller flanges as well. You can get deeper in on the material with a deeper throat design. And it's overall a high quality, highly engineered piece. The JS Tools ones also have the option of stippled jaws. The stippled jaws, instead of having serrated jaw design, they have a bunch of dots basically in there that grip the material. This leaves a less intrusive design of tooling mark on the piece that you're working with and it also creates less stress points. When I bent that flange earlier and I overstretched it and it broke, the stippling design would help to prevent that a little bit because that serrated jaw gives it a perfect line to overstretch on. It gives it a perfect line to fail on. The stippled jaws don't have that failure line to start from. Then you also have the big boy stringer stretchers, something like the Marchant or the Eccle designs. These can have a range of different tooling designs. It's things like soft faced jaws that will grip aluminum without any tooling marks. They also have beak design ones that stick out away from the machine. So as you're using it, it can get into say a deeper piece like a channel, say a, a hat channel. You can get into and actually shrink or stretch in there. Something you could never do with a standard style shrink or stretcher jaw. And then of course the Eccolds have the powered versions that are just big beasts of machine that can really move some material. Now shrinker stretchers are a pretty basic tool and like I said I would highly recommend having them in a shop but I do find that the more you grow the more you learn the less you actually use a shrinker stretcher setup. You'll never entirely move away from them I still use them on a regular basis but I don't use them nearly as much as I used to. When it comes to stretching, I primarily use a linear stretch die in the planishing hammer frame. And when it comes to shrinking, you have things like the pull max or the power hammer options out there that can go ahead and shrink deeper in on pieces of material and in different ways without the tooling marks that the shrinker stretcher setup will give on that material. Now, as I said, I highly recommend you start off with the Lancaster style shrinker stretchers, not buying the import ones. I've just had no luck with these over the years. I really recommend the quality version. Now, if it's too much money for you to go ahead and buy both of these, you can pick up one frame with both sets of jaws. They do sell that option, that kit. The only thing is added time. If you wanna go from shrink to stretch, you have to change out the jaws to do so. The frame is the same between them. It's just the jaw design that's different. I will absolutely be getting more in depth with shrinker stretchers in the future on the channel in project work and maybe some dedicated videos to complex projects with the shrinker stretchers. Maybe I'll demonstrate how I made that inner fender rounded over flange design that I said where I pre-shrunk it. I'll get to that sometime in future videos. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that or if you have any questions I can expand on for you. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about this? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel with a button over here to keep up to date with all the videos every week. Go ahead and check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hot rod hippie with that button there or check out some of my previous videos over here. Thanks for coming around, folks.